Optifine settings. In this video, we're going to show you exactly how to set up Optifine for not just performance and not just looks, but kind of the best of both worlds. How to get the most FPS without making Minecraft look absolutely horrible. So we're going to go through everything in this video as far as Optifine settings go. However, we are assuming you already have Optifine. And if you don't, you can check out the eye at the top of your screen or the link in the description down below. That will take you here. This is our in-depth guide for Optifine, and it really does cover everything you need to know. There is obviously a video guide, but if the text guide is more your style, it's here as well. So go through that, get this set up, get Optifine, and then once you've got Optifine, go to the Minecraft launcher. Now, before you even open up Minecraft, what you want to do is click on installations here. Then you should have an Optifine installations. Hover over this, click on the three arrows on the right, and click edit. Once you're in here, click finally more options. Scroll down, and then right here at the beginning, this is what yours is going to look like. Probably XMX 2G. 2G or 2 gigs is how much RAM Minecraft has. I would recommend upping this to 4G, 4 gigabytes, if your computer has that much RAM. Most modern computers do have enough RAM to be able to handle 4 gigabytes. You should have at least 8 gigabytes of total RAM in your computer to run it with 4 gigabytes. However, if you have less RAM than that, just leave it default of 2. However, upping it to 4 is what I recommend. I also changed my resolution in here. It is worth noting the lower resolution you run, the higher FPS you will get, but uh, we're going for playable here. So at least set this to 1920 by 10 1080. Click save, and then we can go ahead and play Minecraft with Optifine. Once Minecraft is open, we can go ahead and get things set up and get the best Optifine settings possible while still having playability. Because in the past, we've done the best Optifine settings. To truly get the most FPS, you just turn everything down all the way or turn it to off if that's an option. However, that's not going to be the case with this video. We want you to actually be able to play and have good playability while still getting high FPS. First things first though, I think it is important to kind of get a base FPS reading. How much FPS are we actually getting in game? And that's what we're going to look at here right away. Now, if you have Optifine set up kind of already, you may actually have FPS showing all the time, but if you don't, see me hit FN and F3, and when you do that in the top left, we'll be able to see our FPS. Now, right now I'm running shaders. This is almost as a uh, how laggy as you can get Minecraft to be. Uh, so we're currently getting 41 over 22 FPS in the top left up here, as you can see. Now, write this down. So we've got 30, we'll, we'll do 41 over 22 FPS there. So I've gotten that written down, and that means at the end of this video, we can come back here and compare. I would recommend you doing the same, and in the description, put the FPS boost you get from this video versus what it was before, right? If you, like before, you were getting 30 FPS, now you're getting 300, that's awesome and very possible with this video. So let's quit back to the main menu here and let's jump into this. Now, first things first, I wanna address resource packs. Specifically, the fact that resource packs actually don't really help performance at all. I would recommend just running default textures. The whole thing about this video though, is that most stuff can kind of be tweaked around. Let's say you get back in game and you're getting 300 FPS. All you really need to consistently play Minecraft is 30 FPS. So for that reason, you can definitely add back in a resource pack. But for right now, just go ahead, deselect it, right? If it's selected, just go ahead and click the arrow, move it back over to the available section, click done, and you're good to go. You can add it back later if your FPS is improved. Now let's go into video settings and really get things started. For graphics, we want to set this to fast. For render distance, I'd recommend moving this down to 12. This is something that you can boost up higher if you want. However, as you can see, 8 is technically normal. So my goal here is to give you more than you would have with just kind of default Minecraft. Smooth lighting, unfortunately, we are going to be turning this off. Simulation distance it needs to be turned all the way down. Smooth loading level, turn that off. Max frame rate, turn that to unlimited. That's going to give you the best FPS boost possible, which is, of course, what we're going for. GUI scale is your own personal preference. It says that it can be faster, but truthfully, I have never seen this improve FPS. So for that reason, I would just set it to whatever looks best for you. I like three for the videos and everything. Entity shadows, turn that off. Brightness doesn't affect FPS, and neither does attack indicator. So if something doesn't affect FPS, by the way, you can set it to whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you set it to. Dynamic lights need to be turned off. Dynamic FOV, that's going to be turned off on or off. It doesn't really affect FPS. I personally actually like FOV off, so that's what I'll do. Shaders, this needs to be turned off. Definitely. Shaders kill computers. I mean, just absolutely kill computers. And what I mean by that is they lower FPS a ton. So for that reason, we actually have high FPS shaders linked in the description down below. And makeup ultra fast shaders is one of those. We'll enable that later in the video just to show you that you can get over 100 FPS with shaders installed. But no less for this video now and for this part of it, we're going to turn this off. Next, let's move on to quality. Mitmap levels will be turned off and then the mitmap 
type will be nearest, right? Androscopic filtering turned off. Anti-aliasing also turned off. Emissive textures turned off. Random entities, the next section. So emissive textures is off. Random entities, we can leave that on. Should be fine. Better grass, we're going to turn this to fast. Better snow, we're going to turn that off. Custom fonts, doesn't really affect performance. We can leave that on. Same thing with custom colors. Connected textures, we're fortunately going to be turning this off. Connected textures, I love them. I really do. But we're going to turn that off, right? Uh, there is a fast option, which you could try, but off is actually going to be the fastest. Natural textures can actually be left on. Custom sky, that can be left on as well. Custom items, that can be left on. Custom entity models can be left on. Custom GUIs can be left on. Now, all of this custom stuff right here, even natural textures, actually plays towards resource packs. So the reason I'm leaving that on is I'm assuming you're not going to run a resource pack, right? If you do run a resource pack and see lag, you can come in here and actually try turning some of these off. And if you do, get more FPS, then awesome. However, if you don't, just leave these on and you'll be good to go. Your resource packs should work without any issue. From there, let's go. Oh, by the way, in quality, these both distortion effects, FOV effects don't really affect performance. Next, let's go ahead and move on to details. For details, we want to turn clouds to fast. We also want to turn cloud height off. Fancy trees, we want to go ahead and turn those to fast, or not fancy trees, trees we want to turn to fast. Rain and snow, we want to turn that to fast as well. Sky, you can leave that on. Stars, leave that on. Sun and moon, leave that on. And showcase doesn't affect performance. Fog, we want to go ahead and turn fog off. Fog start doesn't really matter because, well, fog is off. View bobbing, personal preference. I personally don't like view bobbing, so I'm turning it off, but that's up to you. Same thing for held item tool tips. Auto save indicator, also up to you. Swamp colors, we can turn that on. However, if you do notice lag in swamps and things like that, you can turn it off. Beignet can be set to fast. Alternative blocks, again, this is dealing mostly with resource packs. We will leave this on by default, but should you have lag with resource packs, try to turn it off. Maybe you will not have that lag anymore. Entity distance, we're going to turn that all the way down to 50%, and biome land, that unfortunately gets to be turned off. I love biome land, you can come in here and try to turn it on after the fact, but for now we want to turn it off. For performance, this is where things can really get interesting, right? So render regions, we want to turn that on. Fast render, we want to turn that on. Smart animations, we want to turn that on. Fast math, we want to turn that on. Smooth FPS and smooth world, you should turn on. However, if you want the most FPS possible, actually leave these off. If you read what comes up, if you hover over them, it says it stabilizes FPS, which is a good thing, right? It's going to make the game smoother. But I want to show you that we can get hundreds of FPS in this, and that's not going to be as possible with both of these on. So we're going to leave them off for now, but once you've gotten in game, you see your FPS, you're happy with it, try turning them on because it might smooth things out and make things a bit simpler and easier to play. Next up is chunk updates. Those are going to be set to one. Dynamic updates is going to be set to on. Lazy chunk loading is also going to be set to on. And chunk builder needs to be set to semi-blocking. This is a bunch of gibberish, but basically this is going to create the least amount of chunk holes and bugs as possible while giving you better performance. Go ahead and click done here. And then we can go into animations. Truthfully, all off is probably what you want to do here. You can go ahead and up your particles a little bit. For example, instead of doing decrease, you could do minimal particles. Or if there's specific animations, like I do like water and lava animations and fire animations, you could turn those on. But it is completely up to you. And the best performance you're going to get is all off. And truthfully, I don't usually notice when stuff like water particles are off. Water not being animated, I might, but not water particles. Click done there. And then in other, there's really not much you want to do in here. I like to turn show FPS on because it shows me what the FPS is. It's also recommended to leave weather on. Time, same thing. If you do want to make it day only, you can do that. Or if you want to make it night only, you can do that. But truthfully, default is probably what you want to do. I do want to speak on full screen for a second. Full screen is going to lower FPS, but I know some people like to play full screen. And that's perfectly fine. You can do that. Lowering your full screen resolution to like a 1920 by 1080 might actually increase performance, so keep that in mind. However, I don't run full screen, so it doesn't really matter to me. The last thing I want to mention here is autosave. If you are getting autosave lag every time that the game is saving, it is lagging, you could try turning this up, but just know you could lose up to 24 minutes of your game in Minecraft, and that's too much for me. So I set it to six minutes. That's about perfect. Click done, and now our Optifine settings are set up. Let's go ahead and jump back into the same single player world, and our FPS will show up automatically in the top left. Before, we were getting 41 over 22, and now on the top left, we can see not moving over 400, with the low end being, well, in the threes now. It was about 60 there when we're moving, but it seems to be more stabilized over 200, if not over 300. And we're actually getting 700 over 300 FPS. Absolutely insane. And again, if you want that to be more stable, you can turn on those smooth FPS settings. 
But let's turn on shaders. Specifically, linked in the description down below, we have high FPS shaders. There's a few options, but my personal favorite is actually makeup ultra fast shaders. So we select this here, click done, and in game with shaders, we are getting over a hundred FPS consistently. As you can see, 300 over 180. And these are real shaders. There is some kind of bugginess with the shadows there, but this is actually the 118 version, one and 119. It's probably why that issue's there. One thing I do want to mention here as well is that we can go in here and upgrade things like our render distance if we want, or you can come in here and change other things like add in a resource pack like the creator pack. Up to you which pack you use, but you can add in a resource pack. And even with a shaders pack and a resource pack combined, we're actually getting over 100 FPS consistently, which is amazing. Last thing I want to show you is if we do go in here and turn on in performance the smooth world and smooth FPS settings, look what happens. It actually is going to smooth those out a lot more. We're not getting as big of wild fluctuations. We're stabilized around 200 and 160 FPS. That's why those should be enabled after you see what your max FPS is, right? This is going to be a lot more playable, a lot easier to play, and overall more enjoyable. So that's how you can actually get the best Optifine settings possible, including over 100 FPS using a shaders pack. Insane. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Give this one a thumbs up if it helped, and I'm out. Peace.